And good morning, One Life America. Jeff Bowles here with you as we host yet another One Life uh, conference call, agent conference call. Thank you so much for joining in with us this morning. We have an excellent guest for you. Um, I believe he can probably take care of the marketing update and uh, be our featured speaker for the morning. So uh, it comes as no surprise, especially for most of you that get your updates through our emails and things of that nature. But we do have our VP of Marketing, Mr. David Heisch, with us on the call today. Uh, he's been with us quite a while, has a lot of experience in a lot of different facets of our business. So uh, we're really going to have a treat by having him on the call this morning. As most of you probably know, some of you may not, uh, we normally have a leaderboard weekly that's released by email, at least you know by Friday before we do the call the following Monday. And I'll use the leaderboard from that and also have a verse of the week that I help work on there. Well, this week, um, Miss Hallie Major, is I, she's just a little bit behind, but probably for good reason. She's preparing to be married in the next month or so. So um, I'm sure she has her hands tied pretty good, uh, but I expect her to be getting us that leaderboard here coming up in the next week. So what we'll probably do is just double up next week, have two leaderboards. Uh, so be patient with us there. But uh, we do have a little bit of a verse of the week. I've already got that prepared for you, and we'll share that now. Uh, and that comes from Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. And it says this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Um, that's a very good scripture, and it just made me mindful uh, of our core values at One Life. You know, much like One Life's core value of service, this verse calls us to first consider others. This week, I'd like to challenge you for us all together. Let's check our motives and correct our priorities. Let's make it God first, people second, and us third. At One Life, we believe that we'll find it's in fact better to serve than to be served. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much, first of all, for an organization like One Life that we can share Scripture, uh, we can pray, we can start meetings uh, in fashions like this right here. So we're thankful for that. God, we just ask you to be with us on the rest of this conference call, be with each and every agent throughout the rest of this week. We thank you and praise you for it all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, and also, as most of you know, we'll move right along to our marketing update. We have our director of marketing on the call, so I won't waste my time filling you in with uh, tidbits on uh, what's going on in the marketing arena. Certainly when we have someone that knows a good bit more than myself on the call, he may share on that or may not. We're giving him the floor and allowing him, allowing him to just share what he feels this morning. Uh, so I'll go on ahead and introduce Mr. David Hosh. Uh, and as many of you also know, he's been with us for a good number of years, almost 23 uh, to be exact, like me, he is a second generation One Lifer, as his father Michael Hosh was part of the One Life leadership team until he retired just a few years ago. David has worked in a number of different aspects of our business in his time here, starting with field sales and sales management, then various office roles serving in our lead department. Then he served as our head recruiter before becoming our marketing director, and now. Recently, David was announced as our VP of Marketing. David is a dedicated family man, and in his spare time, he enjoys playing baseball, hunting, cooking, and attending church with his beautiful wife, April, and their two boys. It's my honor and privilege to make welcome to the conference call uh, Mr. David Hosh. And David, give me just a second here. This uh, web app is updating. And I will go ahead and uh, welcome you to the call, Mr. David Hosh. David, are you there with us? Hey, Jeff, can you hear me? I got you now. Thank you, Dave. How are you? Awesome. Doing great, Jeff. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. And um, it's, um, uh, you're the verse of the week, and it really plays in to, to one of the topics I want to talk about today. But I do want to start uh, kind of capping some of the marketing, uh, highlighting some of the marketing events we have going on, whether it's incentive programs 
or uh, you know getting plugged into social media videos conference calls things of that nature so I'll spend just a couple minutes t uh, talking about that you know for a new agent right out of the gate uh, you always want to be mindful of the rookie fast start program uh, which is uh, the first 12 weeks of your production triggered by the first week you write an application uh, it takes twenty-four thousand dollars of submitted annual premium to to jump into that that first level, and you receive a check for one hundred and fifty dollars plus a plaque. Uh, so that's two thousand dollars of submitted annual premium over the course of your first twelve weeks, and the top level is forty-eight thousand of submitted annualized premium. So that's four thousand on the average each week for twelve weeks, uh, and you receive six hundred and fifty dollars plus a uh, a plaque. Now there's a lot of levels in between there, so a lot of places you can land. Uh, but uh, that's a fantastic uh, way to be encouraged to, to really come out of the gate hot, if you will, uh, with your production. Also keep in mind that we're in the middle of qualifying for the Aruba National, One Life National Sales Convention for 2018. We'll be headed to Jamaica here the end of June, but uh, we are qualifying uh, right now for, for Aruba. Uh, during the course of the 2017 year, that trip will take place in June of 2018. And what does it take to qualify? If you want to make the entry level, the Leaders Club, where you'll receive a trip uh, the ring, a ring and an award or a diamond to your ring uh, and an award, it's $150,000 of submitted annualized premium. Uh, the next level is the Founders Club, the top level, and that takes $300,000 of submitted annualized premium, and that's the trip, an extra day on the trip, ring and an award. So uh, look at where you are. See where if you're on pace, are you ahead, are you behind? Uh, are you on pace for the Leaders Club, the Founders Club? Make your adjustments and work extra hard. Uh, these trips are phenomenal. They're red carpet treatment, uh, generally all-inclusive resorts. So we have a lot of fun and uh, a lot of recognition. Good food, good fun, good fellowship. So try to be with us in Aruba. Um, get plugged into our social media through our Facebook Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. There's a number of ways out there, and that's part of you know, continuing your relationship with uh, with One Life and relationship building is a topic I want to talk about. It'll be brief. I, I, this is something that I've, uh, I I keep on my desk, so I want to share something I'm, I'm very uh, familiar with. I look at it every day, uh, but get plugged into those social media outlets. The Monday Slam comes out every Monday. As soon as the call is over, I'll post that uh, today's Monday Slam for, for April the 24th. And that's Ted DiBiase Jr. giving two to five minutes of uh, you know, inspirational word and, and then gives a little uh, tidbit of information, his take on what, what that means to him and what it means to others. Uh, so make sure you tune into the Monday Slam. And if you want to make sure that you get alerted about every video, Monday Slam. Last week I put up all four of our guest speakers we had in Dallas at the Academy. Perry Noble, Heath Oates, Courtney Clements, and David Vibora. Uh, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get immediate alerts when videos are posted. So make sure you uh, take time to go onto YouTube, find the One Life channel, Subscribe to the channel, and you'll get alerts and know when a new video is, is up and running. Um, and you, you mentioned at the end of your verse of the week, Jeff, that uh, One Life loves to serve more than be, rather than be served, and our, our staff and agents and managers. Uh, and that's a good part of the relationship building process. And that's what I want to talk about is uh, there's a, an article that I found back June of, of last, of 2015, actually. And I printed all this um, it's 11 ways to build solid, strong, lasting business relationships. I'm gonna, I've narrowed it down to eight for the, the, the topic for this call. Uh, and if, this was on smallbusinesstrends.com. And it was a great article that really struck home to me because we are in a relationship building business. That's, that's what we are. Uh, that's what we do, uh, whether it's building a relationship with a client to gain their trust, to gain their, uh, you know, their, uh, for them to like you and want to do business with you. Whether you're a new agent in the business and you're wanting to build a relationship with your manager and their manager and staff and whoever else, um, there's steps you have to take to, to really solidify and to build that relationship. If you're a manager and you're wanting to build a relationship with uh, your existing agents uh, and more than you have now, these are some things that you can really key on. So I hope everybody has their pencil and paper together and takes a couple of notes, things that might 
uh, strike home with you. Uh, if you're a, an aspiring manager and you're just looking at what is it going to take for me to find the right people to work with, uh, to work with me. And it's not work for me, it's work with me. Uh, and, and how do I build a relationship with them? Or if you're a manager and wanting to build a better relationship with your manager or staff at One Life, whatever that looks like. Uh, it takes a dedicated amount of time and energy to build good, strong, lasting business relationships. Um, they are such an integral part of and necessary for our, our business. Uh, but people don't seem to want to put the work in these days. I have a news flash for you. Lasting business relationships just don't happen and develop without the dedicated, consistent work. So there was 11 topics, but I'm going to narrow it down to eight. So there's eight different things I want to touch on, um, different things to really building, key pieces to building a business relationship. And number one for a reason is be authentic. And this is pretty simple. Be who you are and accept others the way that they are. You want to get to know someone. You want to you be transparent when you go into a relationship or start building or developing a relationship with somebody. And don't try to be somebody who you're not. And hopefully the, the people that you're building that relationship with are not trying to be something that they are not. Be who you are. Uh, and you'll build a stronger foundation for your relationship. Number two, Identify shared goals and values. You know, we may not always share the same point of view with everyone, but the shared values are a must. Your values have to line up. If you're trying to build a relationship and your values are way different, there's good chance that relationship will not work. So you're wanting to find people and be around people that share the same values as you do. There again, that's not the same opinions. But and the point of view, but it's the, the values have to be there. Number three, develop mutual respect. And I find that this takes time. Uh, we prove ourselves over time through different activities and experiences. You don't develop a mutual respect the first time you meet someone, or the first, you know, whether you're an agent meeting your manager, a manager meeting your agent, uh, or starting to develop a relationship that might turn into a successful business relationship down the road. That's going to take time to develop that mutual respect, but work on it. And there again, being transparent is a big part of developing a mutual respect. Number four, share some vulner vulnerability. And this is not something you do to the masses, obviously, but with those people that you're really wanting to develop that relationship with, you know, we are human. And sometimes that means sharing and supporting people through difficulty, challenge, and even change. Showing our vulnerability is part of our authenticity. So be vulnerable. Don't always be Superman. You're not ripping your shirt off showing the S. This is, this is a part of being uh, authentic and being vulnerable. Show them that you have your back. That's the number five point. Um, you want, you want your, your team, whether it's your manager or your agent, you want, you want your people that you're real close with, the people that you uh, are, are, are with most of the time and are, are building that relationship with, to, you want them to know that you have their back. You know, let people know that you have their back is a way of showing loyalty to them. Um, unfortunately, there's... There's, there's times when people get involved in gossip or the rumor mill, and those things shouldn't happen. You should, you should be, if you, if you see that taking place, you need to stand up and ask people to reevaluate their views. Um, but show the people you're building the relations, that business relationship with you, with, that you have their back. Point number six, get more personal. Um, you know, if you really want to know somebody, Go ask them, ask them to go out and get some coffee. Um, you know, ask them to go eat lunch. Get away from the, the work atmosphere and go to a more personal setting or intimate setting and, you know, talk, talk personal life with them. Ask them about their experiences, whether it be work or family or sports or whatever, but, you know, develop that relationship outside of the work atmosphere by getting personal with them, and, and you'll build a, a much more special bond and relationship. Uh, the next point, number would be number seven. Plan something fun to do together. 
And this is later on down the road as you're building this relationship. You know, all work and no play makes us dull. Be willing to go out and do something fun together that may not have anything to do with work, whether it be music, art, entertainment, meetups, community events. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do things uh, there again outside of that that work in. I think the first step there is get personal, do some coffee, do some lunch. And then as you develop a relationship, get to know their family. Get to know their, go out to eat together as a family. Go do an event as a family, but plan something fun to do together. Next schedule, the next uh, point is schedule brainstorming time. And if this is if you're really developing a special relationship with someone uh, that you uh, see could be a, a lead manager for you down the road or a lead agent or uh, if you're really wanting to, to get more involved with your manager, schedule some brainstorming time. You know, block out that dedicated time to brainstorm, engage, and do business together. You know, best to set a regular time, a time limit, and an agenda. So when you, you know, make that time efficient when you want to brainstorm, but look at what you can do to make yourself better. And it might not be all about the numbers in the book, but it might be about the process or your personal and, and what it would take for you to take, go to the next level. The next and last point is offer something before asking something. And this is really, you know, tailing off of that, that key verse, Jeff, and, you know, serving. In 2010, trendwatching.com came out with a trend brief that highlighted, and this is in quotations, serving is the new selling. There's no way for you, no better way, rather, for you to sell yourself than to serve and want to serve and be excited to serve. That service, uh, servant leadership, that is a huge key part to building a relationship, not always wanting to demand. You, you can't always be a giver. Uh, excuse me, you can't always be a taker. You have to be a giver, and there's a good mix, a good balance there of being a taker and a giver. But you want to give more than you take. You always want to be there to really work hard and be a servant in leadership. What can I do to serve you? Bill Buckley shared that with me, and it was just something he said. And this was several years ago. He had come to Meridian, uh, was a featured speaker at a leadership conference. The next day, he was enjoying time at Mr. Parker's farm, relaxing time with him and his beautiful wife, Mary. And I text him. Uh, actually, he texted me. And asked me on a day we had nothing to do work-wise with our organization, and said, "David, how can I serve you today?" And that has stuck with me because he was reaching out to see what he could do to serve our company. So, to recap, be authentic, identify shared goals and values, develop mutual respect, share your vulnerability. Let people know that you have their back. Get more personal. Plan things that are fun to do together outside of work. Schedule brainstorming time when you're starting to work into that management or looking for that person to be the next manager. And offer something before asking for something. Remember that serving and helping builds trust like nothing else. Trust in the one ingredient that builds strong, long-lasting business relationships. If you put in the time and the work, I promise that you will be rewarded. Thank you for allowing me to be on the call today, Jeff. I hope that somebody took something away from, from, from what I've had for two and a half or almost two years now on my desk that I look at on a, a regular basis as I work hard to continue to build relationships and work on relationships um, and these steps have helped me along the way, so I hope they've helped you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Awesome. Thank you, David, uh, and thanks again for being on the conference call this morning. Um, and, uh, you know, Dave sharing some nuggets of wisdom there. Certainly, David is no stranger to being a team player. Again, as I mentioned, he served us in a number of roles, done whatever was needed, uh, including helping host our big conferences that we've been doing of late with uh, with the One Life Academy. So uh, David certainly knows a thing or two about teamwork. So again, David, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I want to thank all of you 
for also being with us. You are the most important ingredient, you agents, not only to the conference call, but to One Life in general. Uh, you really are the, uh, I guess, the spoon that stirs the drink, if you want to call it that. You make things go at One Life, and we're so thankful for you. As always, we want to let you know that we are praying for you. And until next week, we hope you have a wonderful week. God bless.